Good morning, friends. Happy Sunday. Hope you guys are all having a good quarantine day. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna post my shopping link right here in the comments. So everything you're about to see is gonna be available right there. I'm gonna pin it so it stays. There we go. So when you do pop on, let me know where you're watching from. Say hello. Um, and if you are watching this on the replay, hashtag replay in the comments. And then if you are new, if you've never seen one of my tutorials before, go and hashtag newbie in the comments so I can welcome you. But hello guys, how is everyone doing today? Hopefully it's sunny where you are. I know I actually sent out the text today. <laughs> I figured if we're all in quarantine, at least we can be entertained, right? <laughs> all right, so I hope you guys are all being safe. I know it's like madhouse out there. Illinois, Arizona, Ohio. Awesome. Welcome, guys. Hello. All right. So we're going to do... Sorry to yawn. We're going to do a really fun eye look today. I've been asked and asked and asked to do Addiction Palette 7, and I'm going to finally do it. So we're going to do this guy right here. It is a statement palette, that's for sure. Um, but this palette's actually a lot of fun because it has a lot of the bright colors that are actually really difficult to find. Um, so I love this palette, not to wear by itself, but wear with other colors. But like I said, it's really difficult to find really bright, vibrant colors like this that aren't like too over the top, you know, like they look a little bit bright, but once they're on, they are very blendable. They're really, really pretty. So I'm actually going to use this color right here today, which is the shade theatrical. And then we're going to use this color electric. Um, so we're going to use these two colors today in our eye look. So we're gonna do kind of like a sunsetty orangey makeup look. And then I am gonna smoke it out and make it look really good using these four pressed eyeshadows. So if you didn't know, Unique has two options when it comes to, to eyeshadows. One, we have this guy right here, which is totally customizable. You get to pick all of the colors, which is super cool. I think there's like 36 colors to choose from. And then we have all of our addiction palettes. All of the addiction palettes come just like this. Um, they come with like all of the colors already picked out. All of the other palettes, palette seven is the only exception that um, you can use all together. So like all of the other addiction palettes come like this and you can use the whole palette together pieces. You can create so many different eye looks. Palette seven is the only one that we have that you probably wouldn't use all of the colors together. I mean, you could, um, but it's a really, really fun palette. The sad news is all of the addiction palettes are gonna be retiring. Um, so while supplies last, you can get them all on sale two ways. One in the kudos, which is like our monthly deal. And then you can also get them on sale in the sets. So you can get three palettes at a discounted price. So lots of options um, as far as eyeshadow. Just message me and I can give you a recommendation on what palette or what shades would be best for you. The one with more colors. I believe these by themselves. Oh gosh, what is it? 49? I think. But like I said, you can get it on sale in the kudos. So our kudos this month, like I said, it's like our monthly deal. You get any palette you want. You get any mascara you want. So if you wanted the 4D or the regular or the waterproof or the brown, lots of options. So you get any palette, any mascara, and any eyeliner. Um, and you can get the regular eyeliner or you can get the dip and draw. So again, tons of options. So you get these three things. So it's essentially like a whole eye look. Um, they're retiring them just because that's what Unique does. We have like some cool products for a little bit and then we like to spruce up the line to stay current and to stay on trend. So I'm actually kind of really excited about it because if they're retiring it, that means they're coming out with something even better. Um, so I'm excited, but I'm also like a little bit sad because I love my Addiction Palette 6. Like I use that probably one or two times a week. So I stocked up on Addiction Palette 6 because I figured by the time I get over it, I'll be out of the three palettes. So, um... Yes. Like brush you use for powders. Going oh, awesome, Caitlin. Thanks for telling me. Thank you. Yeah, so we are gonna be coming out with a new addiction palette one a year, which is cool. Um so be on the lookout for all of that new and in things. Um we're also just announced and I'm not gonna like announce it a ton of times, just gonna mention this once, but we are coming out with a new primer. 
You guys excited? We're coming out with a new face primer that is mattifying. So oily ladies, where are you at? Who's excited? April 1st, it is launching. It's gonna sell out. I'm only allowed to buy one before the launch, so I know I'm gonna stock up on it. <laughs> so if you have oily skin or if you have large pores, the mattifying primer uh, April 1st is game changer. You can wear it with makeup, which prolongs the makeup and helps to keep your oil at bay. Or you can wear it all by itself, which minimizes shine, pore size, and visibility. And it just keeps your skin really matte. So I'm so, so pumped. Um, so yeah, April 1st, that is coming out. And you want to make sure that you are saving my link right here, rayahopebeauty.com. That's where you're going to want to buy it. The kudos, I think, is 73 So you get a really good deal. Yes, they are. I'm so excited. Yeah, so if you have large pores or oily skin, uh, set your alarm April 1st. I think it launches at 6 a.m. or 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'm not a thousand percent sure on that, but I will have a better estimated time release as we get closer to April 1st, which by the way this month is going, we're going to be there like in a blink of an eye. Yes, I know. Aren't you guys so excited? I'm so pumped. I am on the... 2021 product panel for unique so I get to have like a tiny bit of a say in like what we're coming out with and a mattifying primer was like first thing on my docket <laughs> I was like I'm gonna make this happen so I'm so excited that it's already coming out I'm so pumped 79 thank you yes oh my gosh yes it will help with um transferring the mattifying primer is coming out on the first so if you have oily skin or large pores, I'm telling you April 1st, set your alarm. And like I said, I try to keep my website super easy to remember, rayahopebeauty.com. That's where you can just type it in your web browser. It's going to pop right up and you can snag it uh, up April 1st. Difference between all the primers is just uh, preference on your skin. So we have the hydrating face primer, which is very hydrating. It makes your skin, um, gives your skin a ton of moisture. So if you have like flaky skin or really dry skin, or, um, you have like dry patches, the hydrating face primer is incredible for that. The glorious face primer is really good for combination skin because it's not very drying or it's not drying at all. Um, and it does help to keep oil at bay. So the Glorious Face Primer is really good if you're like, I don't know what kind of skin I have. I don't really have any like major skin issues, but it's crime not to prime. So Glorious Face Primer is good for like everyone. Um, now if you have oily skin or large pores, you're going to want the mattifying. So we're going to have the three options. I'm so excited. I'm like, finally unique. Good job. For mature skin, probably either the Glorious Face Primer or the Hydrating Face Primer, Charlene. But if you put makeup on top of the primer, does that matter? Um, I mean, that's the point of primer. It, you put makeup on top of it. It clings on to... So, like, on my skin right now, I have on two things. I have on... Where is it? I have on the Glorious Face Primer, and I have on the setting spray. So, I always spray my face with setting spray, and then I go in with my Glorious Face Primer. I apply that all over, and then I go back in with my setting spray. So that's my pre-makeup routine, and I, I'm telling you guys, it makes such a huge difference on one, how fuller coverage your makeup looks, and then two, um, just like the health of your skin, because you're creating almost a barrier between makeup and your pores and just your skin in general, so it makes a really, really big difference. Also, it clings on to the makeup. So instead of your makeup rubbing off or um, just being absorbed into your pores, it's not. It's sitting evenly and nicely on top of your primer. So it's like a joke that makeup artists always say, it's a crime not to prime, but it really, really is. It makes a very large difference. So if you're not using primer or if you think, oh, primer doesn't really do much, you were a thousand percent wrong. You need to do it. It's so, so much better for your skin and it just makes your makeup look so much better. <laughs> Thank you. I have hydrating face primer and I have mature skin. Primer for older skin would be the hydrating face primer is what you'd want. Um, primer for older skin, absolutely, Marsha. It absolutely is important for everybody, but if you have 
a lot of fine lines and wrinkles or if you have large pores primer for you like it's important for everybody but if you have fine lines and wrinkles or large pores it's even more important for you because instead of your makeup like settling into your laugh lines or into your crow's lines or wherever it's the primer sinks into that so it almost is like it fills in that gap so you have the foundation that sits on top of it oh thanks abby would you recommend for acne scars and pigmentation my skincare and foundation and coverage? Faith, message me and I can give you a full recommendation for all three of those. Wow, well, thanks, Gina. Hi, Karen. Hi, Taylor. Will any of the brushes ever be in the kudos? Uh, brushes aren't typically in the kudos, no. I mean, I can't, like, say for certain because I the kudos are always surprises. Yeah, the hydrating face primer is super good. I'm using the shade Lace in the Liquid Touch Foundation. Thanks, Linda. Um, what if you're over 40 and still have issues with oily areas and large pores which primer would you suggest um i would probably for now layla recommend the glory of space primer for you and also the setting spray so i would recommend the the pre-makeup routine that i do which is um setting spray first so that is going to like mattify your skin and it kind of preps your skin for the primer and then glory's face primer which is going to fill in all of the fine lines, creases, pores, and then gives an even surface for your makeup to sit on top of. And then you're gonna spray your setting spray again on top of your primer. And what that does is almost like sets the primer. So it's like setting spray, primer, setting spray. That is these two guys right here. So that's my pre-makeup routine. Let me know, holler in the comments if you've tried it and if you love it, because I swear if you have had issues and you tried my little secret cocktail of pre-makeup, I can't tell you how many times I've like talked to you guys and I'm like, oh my god, it's so good. 65 and Glorious Face Primer, yes. I have dry skin, what's the best primer? The hydrating. So dry skin, mature skin, hydrating face primer, regular skin, combination skin, oily skin for now. Uh, Glorious Face Primer. Love the BB Cream. Yes, it's so good. Very amazing for dry skin. All right, so now I just took my prime or my primer, my foundation in lace, and I just kind of dotted it all over my skin with my fingers. So I like to do one like layer overall using the powder concealer brush just to get it on there to get it looking really even and flawless. And now I'm gonna really fine tune the foundation. So I'm gonna use my blending bud. These are by Unique. So I wring them underneath water and then squeeze them till no water falls from them. That's when they're ready to use. And you are just going to bounce this off your skin. And what this does is not only smooths out the foundation, so again, my fine line ladies, <laughs> my fine line ladies, um, this is going to really be amazing for your foundation being very smooth on your skin. Um, but it's amazing for everyone, even large pores ladies too. Oh my gosh, it's so good because it's really kind of placing the foundation intentionally into your skin rather than just like buffing it on top. So if you feel like your makeup's just not looking blended or it just looks like it's sitting on your skin blending buds I'm telling you and these are different from like a beauty blender you'd get at Sephora or Walmart or Target or whatever plus who wants to go into those cesspools right now <laughs> it's safer to buy online <laughs> but these blending buds are made almost with a different material it's like almost like a wetsuit so it really it doesn't absorb the makeup and it just makes everything look so incredibly smooth and so much more full coverage. So blending buds, so crucially important. Why the setting spray before primer? I kind of explained that, Angela. So it um, it sets it sets your skin. So it like prime. It's just priming like multiple times. It just sets your skin. It sets the primer. What do you recommend for the first time user with unique products? I don't want to butcher your name, Mar. Vel, Marvel, message me and I can give you a recommendation on like beginners. I know the website can be a little overwhelming at first. You're like, I want everything, but it's not plausible for most people. So message me and I can give you a recommendation on like a starter pack, if you would. Um, so right now I'm going in with my Skin Perfecting Concealer. Always warm it up in between my fingers. And then I'm just going to dot this around my under eye. And this is just going to give my under eye even more full coverage. If I have like a little blemish too, I'll use like whatever is left over on that as well. But this really bumps up the coverage, completely hides your under eyes, and really makes you look super duper flawless. Do you suggest doing the same thing with stick foundation? Absolutely. I use my blending buds after every foundation. Spray, stick, everything. The Kabuki brush? Um, I only use the Kabuki brush with the stick foundation and the spray foundation. 
just because they are a little bit harder to blend out. Um, the liquid though is very blendable and very movable. So I think that it works best with the blending buds and the powder concealer brush. I love the Kabuki brush, don't get me wrong. So you want to, yes, yeah, so you get the blending buds damp. Yes, you'll wring them underneath water before you start. And then you wring them out. So see, no water's falling from them, but they are technically like wet. So it does add a little bit of moisture into my skin as I'm going, which is great. So again, fine line, ladies, uh, dry skin, blending buds, so important. And you get two when you buy them. They're $17, you get both. And they last me usually about a year, if not a year and a half. So they last quite a long time for being $17. All right, so I have oily skin. So I am like very strategic on how I set it because I want my makeup to last all day long. I don't want to have to touch it up and I don't want to look shiny or greasy. So I take my... This is from Walmart, actually. This is a Real Techniques sponge, and I like it just because it's flat. I take my setting spray, and I mist it on there, just like that. And then now I'm going to go in with my Touch Behold setting powder. And what this does, so I popped the cap off mine <laughs> with a butter knife, just like popped it off so I could bake with it and what baking is is it's essentially just applying a lot of translucent setting powder on your skin so it absorbs into the makeup into the foundation the heat from our skin bakes it in so you're gonna see it's gonna go on a little bit white and then it's gonna very quickly turn to being invisible <laughs> so it's going to just absorb any natural oils that are pushing against our skin or if you work in the kitchen i have one customer who's um, a chef i'm sure i have lots but i talked to this one gal and she was like there's nothing i can use that stays all day i'm in the kitchen and i look just like a hot mess and she like goes out to the tables and greets her patron and stuff so it's like okay try the setting powder put that on bake with it just like I'm doing and she messaged me the other day and she sent me a selfie and she looked so beautiful and she's like this after a 12 hour shift I'm shook I'm like yes breach so good so like I said it's absorbing all of those natural oils and humidity and if you're standing over a stove it's being absorbed into this rather than your foundation so if the stick foundation it looks cakey on you, you probably want something or need something a little bit softer on your skin. So the liquid option would be better for you or the BB Flawless. So lots of options. If you have any trouble or having any issues, just message me and I can give you a recommendation. More ideas. Yes, the spray is really good. Thank you for continuing to make tutorials. Such a nice break. I know, right? A good distraction is good, especially for all at home. <laughs> So your concealer lighter than your foundation? Yes. So mine is like one shade lighter. You can use the same shade, but I tend to like using a lighter shade for a more highlighted effect, which is actually really good. So if you have dark circles, um, the shade Organza in the concealer is actually the best shade to hide them because it does have very slight pink undertones to it, which hides the dark circles the best. So if you're looking for a good dark circle hider, um, the shade Organza, like I just said, is really good. The name of the uh, soap I use is Zote, Z-O-T-E. I would say you can get it at Walmart, but honestly, I'm not like encouraging anyone to go outside. So you could probably order it on Amazon if it's still in stock. I linked my kimono and my top in the description with my coupon code. Um, first time user with Unique. Oh, I already read that one. Yes, rose water with your blending buds are really great idea if you have dry skin. Okay. I think I caught up. 49 and 6 minutes, I'm going to bake. I have to dust. Yes, exactly, Laura. So I was actually going to cover that right now. So if you do have dry skin, baking probably wouldn't be the best option because it could dry you out even more. So another option for you on to set your concealer and to highlight without making it super dry is using the Mineral Touch Pressed Powder in the lightest shade, which would be Scarlet or Organza. Both would work. So you're going to take your, this has like my actual foundation. You can see it's darker. But this side has the lighter. So I'm going to grab that and then I'm going to pop this on my under eye. So what this is doing is it's highlighting my under eye, but it's also setting my concealer. So you don't necessarily have to do both steps. If you have dry skin, or I'm sorry, oily skin like I do, you could probably get away with it. But if you have combo skin or if you have um, dry skin, you might want to just dust the setting powder on. Fan brush is amazing for that because of how flexible and light it is. Um, or you can use the um the scarlet pressed uh I can't speak today the pressed powder <laughs> with the blending bud 
it's good it's oh, i'm in san diego so we're it's crazy here as well just like everywhere just started following you oh thanks katie hey what did you do to make your dark circles and your eyes go away Teresa messaged me because i have like the cocktail i'm telling you the skin's care by unique is legit it's so good like the only catch to doing it is you have to be consistent like consistency is key with your skincare but message me and i can give you the regimen that i'm on uh yes debbie uh one of these days i might actually learn how to do my makeup oh <laughs> well thank you for watching and christy message me and i can give you an easy recommendation to start you off with i have extremely dry skin i put foundation on itches what would you recommend so jen i would do the hydrating face primer and the bb flawless both are very moisturizing and very light on your skin so it sounds like your skin just doesn't like being like suffocated so you want those two things and then if you needed to set it i would set it with a pressed powder just like how i'm about to do right now could i see your rings i'm getting just all your hands oh <laughs> so I have my wedding ring and I just picked this one up I linked it or I will link it on my Instagram story as soon as I get off and then I have these linked on my like it to know it which are in which I linked in the description here just like that so for hyperpigmentation the skincare regimen that I would actually recommend for dark circles would work for that as well so um like I said to I think Christy message me uh, Gina and I can give you a recommendation on some products to help heal your skin. I use Brandy the Esteem Lash Serum. So we have a lash serum which makes your lashes grow on our website. It's only $24. $24. And I use it every single night before bed. I use it on my eyelashes obviously and then I use it on my eyebrows as well. So um, highly recommend it. It's, it makes your lashes grow like weeds. It's incredible. Uh, Loretta, message me and I can give you my dark circle regimen. But for makeup wise, to cover it, I swear by the concealer, you guys. Our skin perfecting concealer in the shade Organza is the bomb. Yeah, it's a black diamond. Mm -hmm. Any special plans? Um, my in-laws are camping, so we might go see them, but I'm not sure. I actually have a try on to do here in like 30 minutes with top shelf wardrobe so if you want to be furtherly entertained I'm going to show you some new pieces that she just got in her line the bunch of them are really cute I'm actually wearing a whole outfit by her right now thank you okay so that was the pressed powder and taffeta and we used it all over to just even out our coverage give us full coverage like the porcelain doll finish um it's amazing and it's so lightweight, like it's not heavy, it's not cakey, it's nothing. It's amazing. It's It doesn't feel like anything on your skin. It's so featherly light and it's very soft. So even if you have dry skin, I would typically not recommend a pressed powder, but that one you can use 1,001%. All right, so now for contouring, we're going to do the Beachfront Bronzer. And I'm going to use the Tapered Blusher Brush. I'm going to start at the top of the ear, working to the corner of the mouth. And then I'm just going to wiggle this back and forth and then turn and then swirl this over. And it's just going to soften up the contour. So it's going to warm up my complexion. It's going to um, really accentuate my face structure, basically. Because when you do put on foundations and things like that, you tend to like blur and like yourself out it just looks a little washed out so adding a contour just like that really just warms up your complexion yes they do ship to canada where did you get the kabuki brush it's huge looks me uh samantha message me and i gave you the link to that brush <laughs> yes absolutely i know it does get easier i promise faith <laughs> it gets easier and harder in like different ways all right so top of the ear to the corner of the mouth and before I do, I wanted to show you guys the difference. Look at that. See how like washed out and like round this side of my face looks versus this side? Gives my cheek a lift, makes this side of my face look super thin. Give me a little thumbs up if you guys see that difference. And it doesn't look heavy, it doesn't look muddy, it doesn't look dirty. Just simply gives you that really beautiful, subtle contour. And then you can go even more subtle if you want it. So if you're like, ooh, that still looks a little more intense for my personal preference, you can go even lighter. I'm using the shade Hermosa, which is the middle shade. We do have a shade called Sunset and it's the lightest shade. So you can even go down in one and make it even more subtle. So 
If you haven't contoured yet, I'm telling you, it really makes such a large difference because like I said, we naturally have structure to our skin because of the different natural contour and highlighting just from the sun. So when you put on foundation, you lose all of that. So if you're just putting on foundation or not adding any contour, I highly recommend to do so. It really is gonna make the makeup look a lot better. And it doesn't have to be like some big thing, you know? I talked to a few ladies and they're like, I don't want people to be like, oh, nice contour. I'm like, I feel you. So you can do it very subtly and softly. All right, so now for your nose, I just squeeze the brush and then I just run it down the sides like that. And then if you have like a longer nose, you can contour the bottom. If you want a more pouty lip, you can contour underneath. It really, wherever you put a contour, recedes. It's like adding a shadow there. So for around the jawline, if you have like your cheeks are starting to like droop over, which comes with age, putting a little contour there acts as a shadow there, which is going to make your jawline much more uh, sharp and it kind of hides that double chin or triple chin, <laughs> which I have both. Um, what about round face? Yes, same exact thing, Jolene. I'm using organza and scarlet for under eye own sunset to contour since I have fair. What can I use to give me a little bit of color so I don't look so fair? Um, I would probably grab the next shade up in Hermosa, Trish, and see how you like that. I'm not sure when Malibu will be back in stock, but honestly, there's not a gigantic difference between Malibu and Hermosa. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Bobby. <laughs> you guys are so funny. All right, so now for blush. So I'm gonna use a very subtle blush today. We're gonna use the shade Seductive, which is just a very matte, easy, light, every single day blush. It is a matte, dusty rose, and I'm gonna use a blusher brush for this guy. I love this brush. And we're just gonna dust this on the apple of our cheek, working to the hairline. If you're not like a huge blush girl, or if you're trying to navigate makeup for the first time, this color would be perfect because it's not intense, it has no highlight, it's very light and it just simply gives you that flush color to your skin so you don't look washed out so again perfect blush and these brushes I'm telling you guys especially the contour one the tapered blusher brush seriously make game changer to your makeup routine I'm telling you it wasn't until I started using the brushes that I was like wow I see a difference all right so for highlight this brush is actually not by unique this is by a company called Stalazi it's a tapered cheek brush, but honestly, it doesn't matter. You can use any brush for this. You can even use like the cheap e.l.f. ones. Um, you just want it to be like tapered and fluffy. So I'm using the Touch of the Mold Luminizer in the shade Pearly for this. And we're gonna pop this on the highest parts of my cheekbones and it's just gonna act as like a highlight, give me like a sun-kissed glow. The blush was in the shade Seductive. Um. I probably wouldn't use the tapered blusher brush for blush just because of how it's tapered. Um, the angled brush works better. It applies it much softer. I feel like if you were to use this for blush, it would look a little intense. So I personally wouldn't do it, but teach their own. I always say give it a try. Okay, so now I'm gonna comb through my brows, get any foundation out of there. And then key part to mascara, good mascara application starts way before you put on mascara. This brush right here, see the metal side, you are going to comb through your eyelashes with this. And I'm telling you, you guys, just like the hair on your head needs to be brushed, so do your eyelashes. This is going to ensure that when you do put your mascara on, your eyelashes are already combed out. They're already all moving in the same direction. They're not all crinkled and crisscrossed because your mascara isn't designed to comb through the lashes and like separate them. It's designed to put mascara on your lashes. So do yourself a favor, brush them up before you get to that point and you're gonna have way better mascara application, I'm telling you. The highlighter stick, I love, 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 love. I usually layer it together, but today I just went in with the powder just so it's faster. The brush for your eyelashes makes a huge difference, I agree. And like I said, everything I'm using is available right here. RayaHopeBeauty.com is where you can find all of the brushes, all of the makeup, everything. Yes, Candy, grab it under Tools on my website, and it's going to be under the Eye Tools. And if you guys ever have any trouble navigating the website or you can't find a product or whatever, don't give up. Just send me a message and be like, hey, Raya, can you send me the link to the brow pencil? It takes me 
five seconds. I've been working with this makeup line for four years. I can navigate our website real quick. <laughs> so let me know if you guys need anything at all. I've also worked with this website for so long. If you're having any type of glitch, which our website doesn't normally do so, but if you are having any trouble, I'm telling you, message me before you give up and I can walk you through it and help you out. You don't blade. Um, you didn't blade the makeup under your nose and above your lip. Is there a reason for that? Um, what do you, oh, the highlight? Um, no, it's all just personal preference. Wherever you want to highlight, you can. You can absolutely highlight above the, on the Cupid's bow. Oh, thanks, Trish. Brushes, lashes make all the difference. I agree. Um, Lisa, I would today grab the Esteem Lash Serum. I'm telling you. The steam lash serum makes your brows and your lashes grow like weeds. It's so good. All right, so for brows, I love this guy right here. This is the brow pencil in the shade medium. It is so good at putting on your brows quickly and very, like, naturally. You can go as bold or as natural with this guy as you want, but I'm telling you, it applies it so nice because of how small this is. Has a retractable tip, so you never have to worry about sharpening it. It's water resistant. It's pigmented without being like too brown, if that makes any sense. Comes in three colors: light, medium, and dark. I'm using the medium shade, and I just simply like outline my brows and then color them in. And then it also has a spoolie side too, so you can always like comb through if you've messed up or it looks a little dark in some areas or anything like that. You can always kind of tweak it and fine tune it. Okay. So once you feel good about the brows, ready for this crazy eye look? <laughs> My goal, oh, there's a bird. What do you recommend for skimmy gray browns? I would do the light in the brow pencil. Hi, Tina, welcome. I have one wish. My goal is to get makeup as good as yours and mature skin. Oh my gosh, Candy, you can absolutely do that. Message me if you need any recommendation. All right, first, beginning with eyes, I'm going to start with this guy. This is the eyeliner in the shade Perfect. It's a an incredible eyeliner. It's creamy, glides right on. It's only $15 by itself, but like I said, it comes on sale in the kudos. But I always put this on the water lines. And this actually stays where you put it. Doesn't build up in your tear duct or run. Um, but it's amazing. It's so good. <laughs> no, Candy, you will not look dorky. It makes such a big difference. And if you're learning to do your brows or you're nervous to start learning how to do them, the brow pencil is the way to go. It's very subtle, and because of the spoolie in on the other side, you can comb through and really make it even more subtle. All right, you guys ready for this? We're going to do a crazy eye look for me. It's not, I mean, it's not crazy crazy, but I'm very subtle when it comes to my eye mask, my eyeshadow. So this is going to be a little bit more of a wilder look for me, but I, I have a feeling it'll look really good. Okay, so first things first, we are going to do the Addiction Palette 7, which like I said, all the Addiction Palettes are retiring, so if you haven't grabbed one yet, definitely do so today. You can get them on sale on the Kudos, or you can buy them individually. Um, so Addiction Palette 7 is pretty wild, but it's super fun. So I love it because you get all these vibrant colors. I probably wouldn't use all of them together, but they look really good with some pressed eyeshadows, which is what we're doing today. Um, so we're going to use this color, which is electric. It's like a white. The light is not picking it up, but it's like a kind of like a champagne white. And then we're going to use this color right here, this orange, which is called theatrical. <laughs> Thank you. Um, what if you already have thick, dark eyebrows? So I would probably use the brow pencil just to fine tune them and make them a little more structured. I think that would be really pretty. Yes, seven is retiring also. Fluffy crease brush, yes, April. <laughs> Thank you, Diana. Yes, so I only do the water lines, correct. I need that brow liner. Yes, Kathy, grab it here. You poke yourself in the eye. So I tend to kind of like place it and then just move this way. And then I kind of like blink onto it to get it on the top. All right, so to start this eye look, I'm going to go in first with this color right here, which I believe is called Melodosis, 
I believe. And then I'm gonna get it on my fluffy crease brush, tap it on there. And then I'm gonna slowly start to build this color in the crease and throughout the eye. And now I always say this little trick when you're doing your eyeshadow, rainbow, rainbow, zigzag. And that is a really good little phrase to keep in your mind because it applies it very softly and very blended. So yes, everything is available right here, rayahopebeauty.com. So if you need to grab the brow pencil, if you need the eyeliner, if you need anything, makeup, skincare, or makeup tools related, make sure you go here, rayahopebeauty.com. Um, Kathy, that is the eyeliner, the precision eyeliner in the shade Perfect is what I used. All right, so same thing on here. So we're just taking this color, which is a very subtle peach. So it's going to kind of ease us into this really pretty sunsetty, orangey eye look that we're going to throw on. If you guys have any questions, holler them out. And like I always tell you, if you need to be color matched or you need a recommendation, just send me a selfie or a recent photo with no filter. And I can give you a really good recommendation on some products to start off with. Or if you already have some unique makeup, just let me know what you already have. And we can build off that too to save you money. But just message me and then make sure that you are following me over on Instagram. If you aren't already, my name on there is Raya Hope. <laughs> Thank you. Color eyeliner for blue eyes. Eyeliner, I would do perfect or I would do prim, which is a brown. How do you do the outer corner with the eyeshadow? So I always take my fluffy crease brush and I'll just kind of spin and then work in. All right, so we're pretty much ready for the next color. So that was, I believe the shade's called Melodosis. Hopefully I'm saying it right. So now we're gonna go with this color right here, which is Witty, which is a matte orange. And I'm gonna grab that on my fluffy crease brush. And then now I'm gonna start working a little bit lower in the eye. So going almost over the whole thing and then very, whatever's left over, I'm just going to kind of dust in the brow bone and the crease. Same thing on this side, Witty. And throw that in crease we're getting a little bit lower onto the lid and then whatever's left over throw onto the brow bone do you ever use the obsession brow palette i do i actually just recorded a tutorial on how to use both products um i just personally i have brow hair like i'm lucky enough to have enough of it so i like the pencil just because it's faster to be honest but if you have if you don't have a ton of brow hair the brow obsession palette's the way to go do something more bold, use purple or blue. <laughs> this is gonna be pretty bold, so hang tight. All right, so now we're gonna use this color right here, which is Gingerly, my favorite color. This is like a caramel brown. This is a really good color to have in your arsenal. So we're gonna focus that kind of in this outside corner and then work in a little bit. So this is gonna be what's gonna give us all that depth. So for outer corner, I remember seeing someone asked, you just stick to the side. So swirl and then kind of blend in and then blend along the lash line too. But we're gonna stick to the outside, just like this. So, so far we've used, we've used the pressed eyeshadows in Melodosis, hopefully I'm saying it right, Witty and Gingerly. Does the lip brush help with applying lip products? Absolutely, stinking lootly, especially if you have a hard time with that. If that's a struggle of yours already, the lip brush is amazing for that. All right, so same thing over here. We're taking gingerly, swirl in the corner and then blend in. And I know this brush comes back in stock in April as well. So definitely set your reminder to grab it because it literally is a game changer with doing your eyeshadow. It's a perfect amount of fluff, perfect amount of tapered. It is incredible, it's so good. And then after I get off here, probably in like 15, 20 minutes, I am going to do a try on with Top Shelf Wardrobe. I'm gonna show you some of her new spring pieces. It's a bunch of really cute stuff. So make sure that you're sticking around on Facebook to catch that live. All right, so once Gingerly is in the outside corners, now we're gonna go in with the star of the show. You ready? I'm gonna switch fluffy crease brushes. So grab more than one if you do. <laughs> and we're gonna go on this color right here, which is theatrical. And it is a bright orange. Oh. Always swirl in the mirror, the cap. And then now I'm going to kind of dust this over the eyelid. 
and I'm going to slowly build up this color. And then we're going to work it into the crease. Does that include your kimono I have on now? Yes, my kimono and my tank top are both from there and also the jeans I'm wearing. But I'm going to give you guys a better close-up of my outfit over on that live, which again, we'll, I'll be live in like 15-ish, 20 minutes. What color are the pencils? I use the shade Perfect today, which is a black, but they have white, they have purple, they have brown, they have light brown, they have all the colors, white. Do you practice putting makeup offline too? Um, I mean, I do my makeup offline as well. Um, but yes, to answer your question bluntly, yes, I used to do my makeup any chance I got. I was actually a huge tomboy growing up. I didn't have any practice on doing makeup, so I would spend a lot of time watching tutorials on YouTube and watching other people put on makeup that I thought always looked really beautiful. Um, and I just take notes and then I would try it myself. And honestly, practice, you guys. <laughs> practice and these makeup and tools make it doable and easy. Oh my gosh, this color is literally making my eyes pop. Yay! Hello, Vanessa. Be here all day. Can't go anywhere. I know, right? Do you practice this? Oh, I already drew one. Um, okay, I think I already answered all of them. If I missed your question, just comment to the end. Okay, so once I have this color on, which again, this is theatrical. It's actually really, really pretty, especially for blue eyes. I'm going to switch up and grab my other fluffy crease brush. And now I'm just going to really kind of fine tune the look. I'm going to go with gingerly. And create a little more depth to this. All right. And now we're going to go in with this one right here. This is the liner shader brush. It's amazing for your eyes. We're going to grab this color nonsensical on the liner side. And I'm just going to drag this underneath the lower lash line. This is really going to just complete the whole eye look and really make it look kind of more put together. And I'm just going to drag this underneath just like that. See how it just kind of like completes it. All right, same thing over here. Just like that. But I love this brush for doing this. It does all the work for you. Because <laughs> it can be a little more difficult to throw it on underneath. So I love that one. Thank you. What color blush did you put on? I used the shade um, Seductive today. Use a little, use a little on the blue. <laughs> Thought you would use more palette seven, like blue or pink. So we're doing orange today, but I will be using a pink this coming week, and then on St. Patrick's Day we'll do a fun green. But it's a fun, fun palette. It's totally doable. So many different ways. This is just kind of where I was gearing towards it. Do you ever, do your eyes ever water? Um, mine don't personally water all that much. I mean, maybe Blue Moon they will, but um, gosh, what was it? I read something that helps with that. Message me. I have a tip for that. I just am like mind spacing on it. Okay, so now we're going to use this color right here in palette seven. We're going to use the shade Electric, which is this really pretty kind of white I mean, the name really fits it. It's very electric. So we're going to take it on just a little crease brush, and I'm going to pop this on the inner corners, and this is really just going to open up, make the eye look kind of more pop. But if you haven't grabbed a color for the, your inner corner, this one's perfect for it because it's not very intense. I mean, it is, but it's not like, I don't know. It just makes your eyes, like, open. It's very pretty. Could also use this on like the the middle of the eye as well. Ah, thanks, Teresa. If you guys need anything, let me know. Here to help. All right, so now blending brush. The more you blend, the better it looks. So I always take my blending brush and I just run it around the outer edge like this just to soften this up because you want it to look very melted. You don't want it to look like you have a super harsh line because that's when you start to look like you got punched in the eye. So make sure that you use your blending brush. If you don't have one of these yet, definitely snag it. It's really, really important because you want it to look very light. All right, so 
Next step that I always do before we are calling it quits with our shadow, I always take an empty brush and sweep anything that may have fallen. And then I take my blending bud that had the foundation on it and I very firmly kind of bounce this off underneath my eye. And this really kind of picks up any shadow that may have fallen and it kind of like defines this area a little bit, just like that. Okay, so now we're gonna do our mascara, but before I do my mascara, I always set my makeup. which is super important for taking away that makeupy look or the powdery look and it keeps it in place all day. Also helps to prevent it from getting off on like your phone or if you're hugging people, which you shouldn't be hugging people <laughs> right now. Um, it would help prevent that too. Aw, thank you. I'm watching you, I love you. Aw, thank you guys. All right, so now for lashes, we're gonna go in with the lash primer. Just like it's a crime not to prime your face, same goes with your lashes. This not only helps your lashes to be longer and fuller, but it also helps it um, helps your lashes grow because it's gonna help to hydrate them. It's so good. Does the rose water set as well? So the rose water would be a good setting spray if you had dry skin. If you don't have dry skin, then no. But I would still recommend to use a setting spray in combination with the rose water. So if you um, are applying your makeup and you find that your makeup is feeling dry or your skin is feeling dry, you can spritz your rose water throughout the makeup routine at any point. Um, before you're done, after your uh, pressed powder, it doesn't matter. You can use the rose water whenever you like and it will add moisture to your skin. Thank you. Oh, you guys are awesome. So if you guys need anything, just let me know. If you need to be color matched or if you need any help picking out any shadow or anything, just let me know and I can give you a recommendation. I just need a selfie facing a window. Okay, so now for mascara, I'm gonna first go in with the 4D and this is the best mascara ever. It gives you such amazing length and volume with your lashes has gel and fibers infused in it, but it doesn't make the fibers fall out. Because the fibers are on the smaller bristles, the gel are on the longer, so it really just kind of like coats it in there as it's applying. It's amazing. And this is also on sale in the Kudo. So you get any palette, and then you get to choose any mascara. Can we get a shout out to the folk in South Dakota? <laughs> is the lash primer uh, for mascara gives a thicker look? Yes, it does. Yes, uh, eyeliner, um, I use the shade Perfect in the Precision Eyeliner. <laughs> That's why I'm here. You guys can watch and do your makeup with me. That's actually how I learned. Um, like I said, I didn't have like a ton of experience with makeup, so I would get the same products and I would watch tutorials on replay and then I would skip or rewind or rewatch or whatever on the parts that I needed help with. And it really, really made a huge difference because I was using the same products, I could copy the same technique, um, et cetera. So highly recommend to grab the same tools, the same products and give it a try. All right, so 4D, you can layer it. You can do as many coats of it as you want. Gives such good length and volume. So I always love to do this step too. This is the Waterproof Epic Mascara. And I love that it not only does it make my lashes waterproof, but it adds just a little bit more length and volume. I need more tourists. We're going to be quarantined. I know. I was like, I should go live. but everyone's just sticking at home. Can't go to church. <laughs> Can't go to the grocery store. So if you're going to run out of your makeup, don't go to the store. Buy it here. <laughs> 4 and even trying to think like something through the way. Fall off my... Into, oh no! Shoot, Lisa. Well, it's on sale in the Kudo, so you can still snag it on sale. <laughs> I know, this eye look actually came out very more... That's what I love about these palettes. They look intense until you get them on, and then you're like, wow, that wasn't even that intense. So that was this color right here, which is theatrical, which is on our lid. And then we use the shade Electric on the inner corner, which I think that just really made the look. Yes, I use the 4D and the Waterproof. I love the combination. All right, so now for a really easy, pretty nude lip look, we're gonna go in with the lip liner in Prudent. Grab the sharpener if you guys haven't too, it's $7 or $7.50, and it sharpens your eyeliners and your lip liners without jacking them up. 
It gives, it's amazing. It's so perfect. All right, so lips. Gonna line them with Prudent. And I love this lip liner. It's my favorite. It's creamy, it's matte, it glides on, it's smudge proof, it's so good. So if you wanna overdraw your lips, or if you have a hard time with getting your lipsticks to stay in place, lip liners. These lip liners are so good. All right, so I like to just fill in my lips a little bit, because like I said, helps to cling on to any liquids or lipsticks that you're using. Okay, so Lip Liner and Prudent is there. And then now we're gonna go with the liquid lipstick in the shade Sympathetic. Making sure that's the one I grabbed. So this one is more of a, kind of more of a mauve nude. It's super creamy. And I love these because you get like a matte finish, but it's not like peely or flaky. And I love this applicator. You get very precise application. And it has a very great hold. It's so pretty. Okay, so very last step is I'm gonna use the lip gloss in the shade Lux right on top just to add a little bit of a glossier finish to it. Just like that. And there's the makeup look. Ta-da! Do you have the liquid lipstick sentimental? Yes, I love that color. It's really, really pretty. I was actually going to wear that today, but I didn't know how it would look with this eye look. But this is uh, sentimental. It's more like a mauve kind of purpley color. Thanks, Lisa. I still have a color lipstick. I'm using the shade Sympathetic in the liquid lipstick and then the shade uh, Lux in the lip gloss. And look at how smudge proof this is. <laughs> a little swatch and it's like barely coming off. Um, do you recommend over 50? Absolutely, Sammy. Send me a message and I can give you a recommendation on what products to grab too. So, and that goes for anyone. If you have any questions or you need any help picking out makeup, just let me know and I can give you a recommendation on what to grab um, or starter pack if you wanna start grabbing makeup but you're not, you're a little overwhelmed or you're not sure what products to get. Just message me and I can give you a recommendation on what to start off with. Um, the sets and collections are honestly the best way to go. It's the biggest savings that you could get. So if you go to my website, rayahopebeauty.com and then you go to sets and collections, you can find um, all the collections are like pre-designed and they're all discounted. So if you're trying to save a bunch of money, that's the way to go. That would be the way to go. Yes, this makeup is amazing for older skin. That's right. I feel like that's way too much makeup. It doesn't look natural. I mean, I didn't really want it to look natural. <laughs> I saw this meme. What did it say? It was like, um, wow, you're wearing makeup. It's like, I, or wow, you look like you're wearing makeup. And it said like, I hope so. It was a lot of money. <laughs> but you can actually get um a super simple everyday makeup look or you can do a very natural makeup look i have all kinds of tutorials so today's tutorial was bright and fun and full coverage but if you want to see more of a natural or a no makeup look um i have those here as well so you can search on my page you can even type it in no make makeup look up at the search bar um there's lots of options there's everything for everyone and every preference so Except for negative Nancy's. You won't find anything you like. <laughs> but if you guys have any questions or you guys need any help, just let me know and I would be thrilled to help you guys. So let me know. Yes, I'm going to be doing a St. Patrick's Day look on St. Patrick's Day. We'll do this really fun green. You guys are like dying to see this, these like crazy colors. So we're going to be doing this color. Um, in my next tutorial, I'll probably be doing this one. This like fun pink. Um, so we'll do, we'll do some fun stuff this coming week. So make sure that you, I mean, obviously we're all at home. So <laughs> make sure that you turn on the notifications up here in the right hand corner. You'll see the three dots, click those three dots and it will ask you turn on live notifications and you click yes. Um, that way you'll be alerted when I go live, or you can also sign up for my text subscribe, which is you're going to text Rhea hope to the number 
25456. So you can text Ray Hope 25456 and I give you guys alerts sometimes when I go live, if I remember, or um, I tell you when things get back in stock as well. The lip was Lip Liner in Prudent and the Liquid Lipstick in Sympathetic with the Lip Gloss in Lux. And I'll give you guys the full product list here in the comments as soon as I get off. Um, so if you haven't done so, make sure you comment something. A hi, hello, a heart, a whatever. That way Facebook will tell you when I comment. And when I comment, that'll be the um, product list. Thank you so much. You guys are amazing. So um, I will see you guys here in like literally five minutes to do a try on with Top Shelf Wardrobe with her new spring line. So I will see you guys in like five minutes. Bye.